Ducting in cooling system design is something that's often an afterthought or often overlooked. So today we're going to use the build of the duct for one of our cars as an example for some basic rules for building your own cooling duct. So here we have a mock-up of the cooling system on our black 86 that we're building. You see at the front here we have the intercooler and the radiator behind it. So in this layout where the air is first going to flow through the intercooler then through the radiator and then out through the bonnet. So what you can see here on the inlet side to our intercooler is an expansion. So we're running from this size up to the full height of the intercooler there. By expanding this area what we're doing is reducing the speed of the air so it comes in here at relatively high speed fed from the front of the bumper and as you get this expansion the velocity lowers. So that's good for a couple of reasons when you slow down the velocity it gives the heat exchanger more time to exchange heat with the air that it's going through it because things are moving slower there's more time for that heat transfer to occur. Bernoulli's theorem tells you that when you slow down the flow uh, of an airstream, the static pressure increases. Having higher static pressure in there is a good thing because it means the molecule, the air molecules are slightly closer together uh, and that helps uh, exchanging heat as well between the heat exchanger and the air. There are a couple of factors that affect how much you want to do this expansion. There's a fair bit of theory out there that uh, explains how much expansion you should have, uh, but ultimately it really depends on the application. The inlet of the duct should be between a quarter to a third the size of the area of the heat exchanger. If you start in that size range, you're going to be pretty close. After that, some tuning is required to find the optimum. Another thing to consider when designing a diverging duct like this is that as much as possible you want to keep the flow attached to the walls. So when you've got a diverging duct, if you diverge too steeply or too quickly, what can end up happening is when the airflow comes in, it detaches from the wall, it starts to get turbulent, and in any area of turbulent flow, you actually won't end up having that part of the cooler being effective. So, for example, if the airflow was to come in here and detach this, in this area here, this whole section of the, this top, whole top section of the heat exchanger here would become relatively ineffective compared to what was happening at the bottom. And it's because the flow through these the flow through a heat exchanger does need to be quite flat, does need to be quite flat and laminar for it to work. So in this situation here we do have quite a steep expansion in this section relative to, relative to what we've got at the bottom here. This is more a function of packaging and this is relatively typical of many cooling situations. There's always a limited amount of room to fit everything you would like to fit. In this case it's because uh, the front of the bumper ends roughly in line with the front of the duct and there's just not enough room to package this any further back. This means that this expansion here is more aggressive than what we'd like but it's just unfortunately it's just what we're going to have to deal with. So you can see it expands up here and then tries to align the flow so by the time it gets to the top of the intercooler it's heading hopefully in the right direction. There is one thing acting in its favour though is that uh, with these expansions, as the flow gets closer and closer to the cooler, you tend to be able to get away with more and more aggressive expansions, uh, and that's just due to the static pressure getting higher. We're pretty confident this is going to work okay, uh, but that's what we'll go testing for to figure it out. Another useful rule of thumb when designing uh, ducts, both in and out ducts, inlet and exhaust ducts, is the length. So. The rough rule of thumb is the, the length of the duct from its inlet to where it meets the heat exchanger should be at least the height of the heat exchanger itself. So in this case this heat exchanger is roughly 300 millimeters high. That means the duct should be roughly at least 300 millimeters long before it gets to the face. Again packaging stops this happening in this case so we can't achieve that in this situation. Uh, but essentially what you're trying to do is get the air to be as smooth and laminar for as long as possible so you can gradually change the shapes of your ducts over as long as possible area. So, so far we've talked about only about the inlet duct. We've also got an exhaust duct here which attaches to the back of the radiator which 
even though it looks quite different, it's actually doing the exact same thing, but in reverse. So our inlet is expanding, starting from a small height and expanding to the size of the heat exchanger. The rear one is starting at the full heat exchanger height and contracting to an outlet. So in this case, this panel here is the, pa is the outlet panel. That's where the duct will be going through the bonnet. So this area here will be open. So what's happening with that exhaust duct is that in the same way that we wanted to slow the flow down on the way into the intercooler here, after the air has passed through the intercooler and then the radiator, we want to speed it back up again uh, as we go through the exhaust duct. The idea there is the ideal exit speed when it leaves the top of the duct is as close as possible to the free stream velocity as in the, when I say free stream velocity, I mean the air that's approaching the car and flowing up over the bonnet. We want the speed of that to be as close as possible to the exit speed coming out of the duct. That makes for the most efficient heat exchanger ducting possible. Um, it means that the free stream air is also helping draw air through your duct rather than it working against it. So all the same rules that we applied to the inlet side also apply to the exhaust side. The exhaust side is probably the part of the equation that tends to be uh, overlooked. It's, it's certainly just as important as the inlet side because really what if you break it down to first principles what's happening here is that what drives the flow as in what makes the air flow want to flow from this side to this side and there's a pressure difference while we want high pressure on the front that also means we want low pressure on the rear so if for example we just exhausted this out into the engine bay without any care for uh, trying to help the flow through the heat exchangers this whole this front ducting system would be much much less efficient so it's important to remember that the exhaust is just as important as the inlet so the air will want to take uh, the line of least resistance it's always like that it doesn't want to go uh, anywhere where it's difficult to go it will always take the easiest way out so we haven't got any sealing in here at the moment but what's an, a really important part of the ducting design is also that where air can escape it's sealed so in this section here we'll be having uh, some extra plates and some foam seals so any air that enters the front of the heat exchanger is forced to flow through the fins uh, and out the outlet of the duct. If a duct system that isn't sealed properly is a massive drop uh, in effectiveness. So making sure that all the air that enters the front of the duct uh, is forced to go through the heat exchangers before going through your exit is a really important part of the duct design. With the way we've packaged the cooling system in this car, we took the decision to get the flow out of the heat exchangers over through the bonnet. Now part of that was a packaging reason of where we can fit uh, ducting, but also the bonnet over the, top of car, over the top of the car is actually a pretty convenient place to exhaust uh, the cooling air. Uh, that's because when you, you, we want to align as much as possible the flow uh, of the exhaust with the airflow and because the bonnet is such a large flat area it actually really helps um, to exhaust it in a way where they're working in the same direction. Looking side on at that duct you can see that we're trying to turn it around and flow out the back of the car as much as possible. If you like that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week and if you like free stuff we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.